we are gatekeepers of the home and the nation. Relentless in prayer and intercession. And the word for today, the topic for today is spy the land. Can you tell your neighbor, spy the land? Spy the land. And the Lord gave me this powerful word from the book of Numbers chapter number 13 to 14. Somebody, there is a land that God has set before you. Somebody, you are moving into a new season. Even as we are moving, even in time, into a new year, I want you to know that it is not just a time for you to just flow with the crowd and flow anywhere and just begin to move. No, God has a divine timetable for you. He's got a divine timetable for your family. He's got a divine timetable for your business. He's got a divine timetable for our ministry, even for me as a person and for each child. They have their own divine timetable. There is a time the child has to start school. That's the appointed divine timetable of that child. There's a time that that child has to move higher. There's a time your marriage has to enter a certain phase. There's a time that you need to build. There's a time that you just need to run things and manage things. And there is a time you need to take position. It is not when you're 80 years old that you're thinking of buying land and building a house. As long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest will never cease. But it's important for you and I to know our timing and the time for you to do certain things. And when God has already prepared those things and when he prepares those things and you step in at the right time, you will find out that you'll be able to achieve. And so this word of today it says spy the land. Can you give me Numbers chapter number 13? I want everyone to open your Bibles to Numbers chapter number 13. And we'll start to read from verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, all of them, Men who were heads of the children of Israel. Thank you. That's one to three. Thank you very much. So, look at that scripture. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, send men to spy. Send men to spy the land. Now, the key word there is spy. Now, when we hear that word spy, it usually connotes a negative thing. You don't want people spying on you. You don't want people spying on your business. You don't want people spying. You'd rather they come to you and ask. But you see the key word there, which we must not miss, is that he said, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, send men to spy out the land which I am giving you. Meaning that land is already your own. But the people that are there are not my will. And so you've got to possess what belongs to you that is in the hand of somebody else for the next season. Are we getting it? So, when you look at other versions, the KJV says, search the land. NLT and NIV says, scout the land. But I want to go back to the original and New King James, which says, spy the land. What does it mean to spy? To spy means to secretly obtain information about your enemy or your competition. To spy means to keep a close and quiet watch on the actions and words of another person. To spy means to obtain confidential information about the activities, plans, methods of an organization by a competitor. So spying is a serious business. I may be looking at you and I may be seeing some things you are doing and I'm not spying. But you see when they send a spy to a country. That spy is a very focused person. That spy, his life can even be in danger. That spy has an assignment and the assignment is to collect something which will be delivered somewhere else. Why is this important for you and I at this time? These children of Israel, they were about to enter the promised land and hear this. They made that journey in less than 12 months. They had not wandered for 40 years. They were at the brink of entering the promised land. Because they said that journey was not supposed to take them 40 years. So that was their first opportunity to enter into the promised land. Somebody, you are at the, at the brink of the first opportunity of your life as we are moving into 2020. You must not lose your divine positioning. Because you are going to see, because the children of Israel, they missed it. They wandered for 40 years. Something that, a journey that should take you. One year, if you're not careful and you miss the opportunity,
city. It will take a long time. And so, the children of Israel were commanded by God himself to go and secretly obtain information. On the face of it, spying looks like a negative thing. But if we put it in the context of the scripture, we are going to see that in this perspective, it was God that commanded Moses, send people to go and spy. It was not Moses. It was not a personal ambition. It was not a spying because somebody wanted to get an advantage. I'm here to declare to you, somebody, because you want to move into 2020, your year of manifesting, your year of showing forth, God is going to tell you to do some daring things. God is going to take you to some places where you will be resisted. Don't worry, you carry something. Nobody can shame you. He said, let them go and spy. Will their lives be at risk? God knew that. God is going to send you on some fearful assignments. That the giants in the land will resist you. You are going to get to a place where you know that this is where God has prepared for me. This is my assignment. But there will be roadblocks. Are you going to be strong enough? Are you going to be resilient enough? Are you going to be fully persuaded to know that this is where I'm supposed to go? I don't care the limitation. I don't care the powers against me. I don't care who speaks against me. I don't care who wants to put me down. I will reach my goal. Are you getting something? Because 2020 is a year of reward of your past labor. The devil doesn't want you to get it. He knows the Bible says as long as the earth remain at seed time and harvest, you have been planting, you have been sowing. Do you think God is a wicked God? He's a father that loves you. He's a father that wants the things you are doing to work. So when you are faced with disappointment, it's not, God's, it's not that God is wicked. He really wants you to make it. Just like you have a child who, who did an exam and who failed. What will be your reaction to that child? And you know that that child is reading. You know, sometimes you see your child reading and struggling and the child comes with, it doesn't come with good results. What do you feel towards that child? Is empathy. Is empathy you feel. I will never forget when I was writing my ICANN exam. The year 1991. My final ICANN exam. Then, if you fail one stage of ICANN, you fail everything. It's not like now. If you fail one stage. And I was coming from a background of sociology. I read BSc Sociology and Anthropology. And here I started the accounting exam. I was working in an accounting firm. And I had to start from foundation. PE1. This was my final exam. This was something that we would go for lectures every Saturday and Sunday. Where will you go for party? Which wedding? Who will invite you to wedding when you are doing ICANN? You are like a mad woman. You go to work Monday to Friday. From Friday, you enter the lecture room, finish by 10. You get back home. Saturday, you run out of the house for lectures. Sunday, immediately after church, you run back for lectures. So my dad, he was looking at me. My dad was looking at me that this girl, she's always running up. And then one day, I ran out of the house. It was in the days of shoulder pad. Do you know the day of shoulder pad? <laughs> Where the shoulder pad, you, we fix it ourselves. How many people are as old as me? The, the tailors never used to put shoulder pad. You will buy your shoulder pad. Fix it yourself. Then you will be going. I didn't know that I put only one shoulder pad. I was rushing for lecture. Somebody said, ah, do you want to fly with one hand? My dad had been looking at me. And so it was the day of the exam. My dad called me. He was not born again. My father called me to the sitting room. He said, Busola Wambi. Kule. Kneel down. I bless you. You will do well. That exam you are going to do, you will pass. That examination, that accounting paper was the most difficult. People failed it. And when you fail one, I don't even know what I wrote. That was how I passed. Somebody are praying for you for here. You have been struggling. That business has not been working. You put in everything. Your marriage is not your fault. Something is just going wrong. I prophesy to your life. God will help you in the name of Jesus. I said God will help you. God will deliver you. He will release his grace to you. In the name of Jesus. That problem will not swallow you. That failure will not finish you. In the you will show forth. In this new year, you are going in to succeed. In the name of Jesus. That's the heart of the Father. To lift 
lift up the children. To lift you up. And so, sometimes things are happening. You don't know why. You, the child is trying. So when you have such a child, you will be careful. What's wrong with this boy? Is it that maybe he, he doesn't know, he's not suited for this kind of thing. You know, you see some people, they are really trying, but they are not making it. But God will help you and I. In the name of Jesus. So it was God that commanded Moses, send them, go, let them go and spy the land. Why? Number one, God has given them the land, though they were yet to possess it. As we enter 2020, the things that God has given you that you are yet to possess, you will have the wisdom to possess it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Number two, technically the land was theirs. And God wanted them to assess the full potential of the land. Technically, some things are already your own. And because you don't realize it, you don't consider it. I say that again. Technically, some things are yours. But because the devil keeps filling your heart with fear, you don't consider it and you don't prepare for it. I'll give you an example. That building technically is already ours. The size of this ministry is not what you're saying. If I don't, as a leader, fully realize the potential of that place, I will not make the arrangement I need to make to fill it. If I don't say, no, God has promoted this ministry. If he gave us a hall of 2,000 people, it means 2,000 people have already been assigned to sit there. Otherwise, God doesn't waste his resources. He will not give us money to build an auditorium that people will not fill. Are you seeing it? Many times, people don't really realize the potential that God has given them. Fear keeps them back. No, it will not be done. So that's why, as a leader, I have to come and start to declare, that roof will be done before November 2nd. Did I have the money? You push with your faith. You push with your faith. If you don't push with your faith, the devil is ready to push you back with his fear. And when he keeps pushing you back with his fear, before you know it, the journey of one year can take 40 years. What did I say? It can take 40 years. But if you believe God, the Lord told me, it is a time of water walking faith. The people that will survive now, whether as a leader, whether as a businesswoman, whether as a mother, whether as a pastor, no matter where you are, if you do not have water working faith, you cannot achieve the success of 2020. Because the giants are there. The evil voices are loud. They must not put you down. You, that God has put in the house of the, of the Lord, you will stand and declare the word of the Lord. It says, as soon as, as long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest. That is the word. Bring ye all the tithes into my house. No matter who is speaking against it. It is not the evil voice that we amplify. We do not allow the evil people to push us back. We will stand to declare the word of the Lord. And the resources of God will come for the work of God in the house of God through the people of God. And we will achieve the purposes of God. Everything depends on our faith. Do you believe this word enough? Or are you afraid of the voices of the enemy? That word that God has given you, do you believe it enough? Or you're careful about your enemies. Your enemy is not careful about you. Technically, the land was theirs. But God wanted them to realize the full potential. Technically, the land was theirs. God wanted them to go and look at it so that their heart can be enlarged. And look at this. Look at the strategy of God. God's instructions were clear. Give me Numbers 13 verse 2. Look at the strategy of God. God did not just say, send anybody there. Are you with me? He didn't say, send anybody there. He said, send 12 people. Give me Numbers 13 verse 2. Send men to spy out the land, which I am giving the children. From each tribe of their fathers, you will send a man. Everyone, a what? A leader, not anybody. Not any voice. Leaders that have insight. Leaders that have divine spiritual capacity. Leaders that are head above others. Leaders that can reason. Leaders that can find direction. 
It was not Moses that did it. Too. Who were the people? The leaders. Are you with me? The leaders. He said, send leaders. Why? What's the significance of this? God wanted to expand the leadership capacity of those people by helping them to visualize their future potential. I tell people, a leader, a true leader, sees things on the 20th floor. The view you have when, in a, when you are in a building, 20 floors, I don't know the highest building in Lagos. If you are in a building that is 20 floor high, what you see, let's assume the building is in VI, what you see is different from what somebody on the second floor will see. You are in the same building. But the person on the 20th floor will have a wider view than the person on the second floor. And they are both in the same building. How high are you in seeing what God has prepared for you? Some people will not see beyond their nose. And you are both in the same building. Somebody else in that same building that's got the faith of God can see. And see as far as their heart can see. And say, no, 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 no. That's why, <laughs> watch this. That's why in the days of old, if you watch some, some old films, you will see that they have a lookout point. Like a fortress. They will have a post that is high. Why? When somebody goes there, he'll be able to see anybody. You know, when the horsemen are coming from far, he'll be able to say, some people are coming, you oh. <laughs> Hey, today I pray, may you move to the 20th floor. Yeah. I say, may your faith move to a higher level. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, may you be able to see what is still afar. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. He said, send leaders. I don't want anybody. I want people whose heart can grasp what I've prepared for you. Can you grow up today to grasp what God has prepared for you? Can you see the full potential of that small thing in your hand? Can you see it bigger? Can you see the picture that God is painting? The picture of 10 years from now. Can you just see it because you're not going to die? I say that voice of death. I shut it with the blood of Jesus. You're not going to die. Don't think because you, the devil is telling you you are going to die. You're not thinking of the future. What's going to happen to the ministry in 15 years? I will not die. Look at it 15 years from now. The Lord told me, daughter, sit down. All those prayers you have been praying in, people will be seeking you now. May you see with the eyes of your father. Send men to spy the land. Let them know what I'm about to do for them. Now, <laughs> when you are taught in physics... Why did God tell Moses, send leaders to go and spy the land? There are some things you need to experience so that you know where God is taking you. When you are in the science laboratory in your school and they are teaching you about the law of gravity, you know, we cram a lot of things. We memorize. Eh? You memorize. You release during the exam. You don't even know what you are doing. A lot of science students, they have never seen the experiment before in their life. You just memorize it. You pour it. Garbage in, garbage out. But when you want to know what is the meaning of the law of gravity and the law of lift. You know the law of lift, it defies the law of gravity. Because the law of gravity says anything that goes up must come down. So how come the aeroplane goes up, stays up for hours and doesn't come down? It's because of another law called the law of lift. And that law of lift is propelled by the engine, by what the power that the engine generates. So when you're teaching people and they don't understand it, the best way, that's why schools, they go on excursion. Are you with me? So when you're trying to teach that, just organize for your student to go for an excursion and stand by the airport when the plane is about to take off. So they will be able to eh, so this is what they're teaching me. This is what it means. That was what God was trying to show them. Send them to the land to go and see. And when they got to the land, they moved for 40 days. When they were leaving, you know grapes. How many people buy grapes? You know the, the best bunch you can get in Nigeria? Maybe like this. 
the grapes in the land, two men had to carry it. God was telling them, this is where I'm bringing you to. Go and sample yourself. They saw, they brought back those grapes as an evidence. Yet, <laughs> yet, 10 out of 12, they still were fearful. What is that telling me? Telling you. God has shown, shown you and I evidences of the great things he will do for us. Yet, the voice of doubt, the voice of fear, what people will say is not making us to move with the power that God wants us to move. But in 2020, the army is rising. I said the army of believers are rising. The army of the faithful is rising. Something in you is rising. Because God has shown you where he has, he's taking you. And no voice of doubt will keep you down. So, leaders. We're looking at the reason why God chose leaders. What was the first reason we said? God wanted to expand their leadership capacity. Second reason, he wanted to demonstrate to them. So that I can grasp the principle he was trying to show them. Number three, leaders are drivers of initiatives. God didn't just say pick anybody. He said pick the leaders. Leaders are drivers of change. Anytime you want to have, you want to bring in a change or you want to do something, first of all, gather the leaders. That's why if you, are, if you want to break any news or whatever, speak to the leaders first. Don't just go and say it anyhow. When you speak to the leaders, the leaders will know how to communicate it. So, leaders are drivers of initiatives. And whatever the core leadership is saying, they will be able to pull everybody al along. So, we are here at the close of a new year, uh, of the year 2019. We're gradually stepping into the close of this year. And we're all anticipating a new year. Friends, if you want to record early victory in 2020, if you want to record early wins in 2020, if you want to record early exploits in 2020, you must start to strategize now. You must start to spy the land of 2020. You have to start to search out the land of 2020. Don't be like people that enter the new year. They say they are waiting for budget. The budget that they will never release until October. Your business is waiting for budget. Create your own budget. Create your own mantra. Create your own word. What is going to drive you in 2020? One of the best lessons I learned this year was early start. From December, I started praying towards 100 days. And before the first six months of the year, I was able to do six retreats. You have to make an early start before the enemy will, grow, will, will begin to attack you. Catch the enemy unawares. If you don't plan early, even if you want to travel, if you don't leave your home early before there's traffic, but if you leave early, you would have gone before all the traffic, the last month, the FRSC, a journey that should have taken you like three, three, three hours. Different people will be stopping you at different times. Somebody will make an early victory. I say in 2020, be determined to have an early victory in the name of Jesus. So, begin to strategize now. Scout 2020. Make a plan. Don't wait for anybody to make a plan for you. Make a plan. The first five months in 2020, what am I going to achieve? Don't say, I will wait to see. You want to wait to see what? You'll be the one to paint the picture of what you want to see. <laughs> in your business, in your ministry. Start right now. Spy the year. Decide what information is needed. Before you enter the new year. Decide. Make careful steps to get the information you need. So, if I know that I need one, two, three, four information, how am I going to get the information? If you're about to step into a new season, if you're about to step into a new role, if you're about to step into a new responsibility, two things you need to do right now. Ask yourself. What do I need to know about the new role, about the new season, about the new responsibility? That's your business. You want to take it higher. You have finished. You, look, we will pray. We will, we will fast. 
Those things are important, but my mentor told me something. Apostle Wally Oladi, I will never forget. He said, daughter, I will say it in Yoruba and I will interpret it because that's the way he said it. Akpashe ojuari nolo. It says the one that declares is greater than the one that sees. If you see something and you don't do it, it's useless. I saw. I saw. I saw. But some people, you are telling them you saw. What you said you saw, they are moving with it. Are you getting what I'm saying? You know, some of us, we want to stay at that level. Faith without works. People that achieve. They don't even need to see. They will hear what you saw. They take off with it. Because God is not a respecter of persons. As I'm saying this word, move forth, show forth. You can hear, right, your book is full. Go to your house and sleep. You are waiting for the moving of the waters. You continue to wait. Somebody else will hear and step out. In 2020, I want to rent a shop. Seize a complex. To let. 080. No money. Oh. <laughs> 3, 4. Please, I'm seeing this complex. How much is it? 500,000 years. 500,000? Ah. Eh, how much last? Ah, madam, that's the price. She begins to pray, oh God, make a way. This is what I want, Lord. Remove the shoe. Stand there. The one that saw is still there in the prayer room. I'm seeing the branch of an olive tree. This one has moved from there. Discusses with the husband. The husband now says, ah, eh? you know we don't have money. Then the husband goes to the uncle. Uncle, you see this is my wife. She's always, she likes business. Your wife wants to do business. How much? 500,000. Tell her to see me. Somebody give Jesus praise. Say, as I'm seeing, I'm moving. That's how you see people. You think they cannot achieve anything. But the faith inside them. In 2020, let your faith arise. We will fast. We will pray. We will prophesy. But we must move. That's the secret. If you don't move. And what makes you move? You move by faith. Faith is the substance of things not seen. Or is it the evidence? Is evidence of things not seen. Everybody say from today I change my name to faith. That's how you see people, ordinary people achieving extraordinary things. Your faith has to be like that of a child in 2020. Everything I, when I learned that, everything doesn't have to belong to me. But I have access to everything. It doesn't have to belong to me at that time. But I have access to it by faith. By faith. I make my demand by faith. And that's why sometimes I thank God for the people around. Surround yourself with people that can encourage you. Sometimes your own faith may be low. You will think, oh, we cannot achieve it. Somebody will just come and say, no, pastor, we can do it. We can do it. I thank God for the crop of leadership. They encourage me sometimes. How are we going to do this? They say, no, pastor, we can do it. It doesn't mean the money is with them. They're also women of faith. So when they spur me, and push me at that time that I'm low. Then I get my energy and I declare. Because God has vested in me the leader. The grace to make things happen. Are you with me? But if I don't have enough courage to say it. Nobody will do anything. If somebody else is saying it. It won't have the same effect. Like if I'm saying it. So you must be a person of faith in your business. In whatever. Because it is you that God has given the grace for that place. Nobody will come and do it for you. They can only encourage you. But if you don't allow their faith to enter and boost you and you declare, and when you begin to declare, as you are driving, everybody's following you. Right or wrong? Because that's your advantage. You will not fall short. I hope this word is sinking. Say my 2020 is for showing forth. Ah, Mazada Gale Brokote. I already see a breakthrough service there. People are telling me money.
Monday, we, we want to come, we can't come. But there will be once a month breakthrough service. That that place will be jam-packed. I say it will be jam-packed. In the name of Jesus. So two things. Ask yourself, what do I need to know about where I'm going in 2020? What information do I need to know about where I'm putting my business? About where I'm putting whatever? What information do I need to know? In this my new season, in this my new responsibility. What do I need to do? How much is it to hire a boss from Ekwe? How much is it to hire a boss from Aja? How much is it to hire a boss from Lagos Island to bring people there once a month? I have to find out because I have a goal of something I want to do. How am I going to achieve it? What information do I need? Number two, go ahead and obtain that information. Get the capacity. Acquire the skill needed. And that's exactly what Moses did. Give me Numbers 13 from verse 17. Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains. Thank you. The first thing he said, Go up this way into the south. Number one, direction. Direction. Moses gave them direction. You must know which direction you want to go. There was a time in this ministry that our focus and our direction was just establishment. We had no departments many, many years ago. Uh -huh. Everybody was just coming for fellowship from 20 women to 50. Next week, 70. After another week, 100. No organization. People used to call me then, uh, Sister Busola, I want to sing. No choir. So I would tell them, okay, sing. But after a while, we had to go into the di direction of establishment. After a while, after being established, being in different departments, we had to go into another direction of moving higher. So what direction do you want to take your life, your marriage, your business, your ministry in 2020? He told them, go to this direction. Number two, please continue to read that same chapter, that same verse. And go up to the mountains and see what the land is like. Whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak. Number two, he gave them specific direct, he gave them specific instructions about the people there. Study them and know their traits. Hmm. Know their strengths. Know their weaknesses. Know their size. Let me tell you, there is a season in your life, you have to study the kind of people you will come across. Otherwise, if you don't know the kind of people you will come across, they will discourage you. There is a level where you just give your life to Christ. Every day will be testimony. Yes. You don't have a car. You say, hey, uh, oh, Master God, help me. As you, as you come outside, somebody God, will say, God. where are you going? Are you, you know some people, every Sunday they must have testimony. Yes. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Welcome. You will now get to another level. The thing will be so difficult to get. And God will begin to build your faith muscles. Last minute he will give you. Last minute it will give you. That to another point. You pray and pray. The thing will not come to pass. <laughs> Yet, you will not be put to shame. He will now stretch your muscles to how to spend grace. You know, sometimes the money will come at the last minute. And when God took me to that level where I began to spend grace, I would walk into Okeari in my shop. As I'm going, I didn't have any money in my pocket. Too. And it's almost Christmas. And you know you want to fill your shop. And Holy Spirit says, go, go to the market. As I'm going, no money. Hey, Musa, how are you? Mrs. JJ, you know by today. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really, uh, I, I, money is, I didn't bring money today. Uh, come now, you'll be my customer. Come. Uh, uh, not be you. I began, I walked through the market. My boss, highest boss, fool. I didn't spend one. What was I spending? Grace. Relationship. God will now take you to that level where you begin to spend some money. He's developing your faith muscles. You will now get to another point where he takes you through a difficult place. Where he took Job. And Job said, though he slay me. Where your faith is tested. Where something happens to you, people will wonder, eh? How can this happen? But you come out of it and say, I don't have any other God. If Jesus doesn't come out, I don't have any other God. I am with Jesus all the way. Whether he works or he doesn't work, no matter what goes, it is Jesus. You get to another level. When you get to another level,
another level. The devil knows that I can't do anything with this one again. Are you with me? So God takes us from one level to another level. I tell people, see, God is a God of times and seasons and he takes you from one level to the other. And even the whole world in our Christianity, during the time of Abraham, there was what was called child sacrifice. It was acceptable. People used to idolate us. They used to sacrifice their children. That was why Abraham could take Isaac, pack wood. He wanted to go and kill him. And Bible recorded it for him for righteousness. But if today you said you heard God, you not carried your child, your only child, you want to go and kill the child because you heard God, they will arrest you for attempted murder. So what is that telling you and I? There are new solutions for old problems. What worked for some people in their Christian life before, it can't work again. I tell people, the heart of people have been seared in giving, whether we like it or not. But God must give us new strategies to do his work. Nobody can kill anybody again in the name of Christianity. Under the law, they will punish the person. But does it mean God doesn't want us to have a heart of giving? Yes! So it will be in other things that will test us. And so, we must be people that know the now word of God. The now method of God. What is God saying in this season? How can I do this thing in this season and it will work out? Despite all the limitations. People don't even want to go to church again. How do we reach them? You carry your flyer, your track. Nobody wants to collect it. You organize big program in the church. Nobody is getting saved. We all enjoy the AC and we look fine. Call for we don't even we don't even say it again. That come because we don't want to embarrass ourselves. Is that not it? You have to go after them. They're out there in the world, paid in full. See people giving their life in the bus. We have to be creative. The challenges of 2020 in your life, in your business, in your marriage, you have to ask for the wisdom of God for 2020 so that you can be successful. Somebody will achieve success in the mighty name of Jesus. So, ask, he began to give, ask them specific things. Verse 19. In verse 18, he asked specific instruction about the people there, their strengths, their weaknesses, their size. Let me tell you, you have to know that this is a season of persecution. What did I call it? Because after every persecution, there's an explosion. We are in the end times. God wants the world to move. Some of you, you are sitting in church. You are not doing what you're supposed to do. Holy Spirit will sweep you out. They will persecute you in that church. They will do all sorts of things because God has already sent you to go outside and use your gifting. But maybe you are trying to be careful. You don't want to, you know, let me just, well, if he has told you to move, you don't move. You will not be disgraced. When disgrace comes, you carry your bag. Mm. God has cuckoo been telling me to do this. Let me go and do it. Mm. This one that they don't like my face in this church. Because that church is not for you. You don't have any seat there. They've already removed your seat in heaven. Put your seat somewhere else. You are sitting down there because you don't want to offend your pastor. Is it about your pastor or about God who sent you, who gave you a gifting? And you know that when you gather the widows, you know that when you gather the singles, you know that when you gather those small boys, they're always blessed in your own little way, you know. But if you don't work on it, if you don't, if you don't fan to flame the gift of God in your life, who do you want to do it? Is it angels that will drop from heaven? So it's a season of persecution because God has put something in you. If you don't move, God will push you out to a point where you say, okay, God, okay. Tell me how we go. So, number 14, verse number 19. Numbers 13, verse 19. Please put on but the... Uh, say, whether, the land, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds. He began to ask the nature of the land. Peculiarities. You have to find out detailed information about the strengths and weaknesses. He said, find out about the agricultural potential of the land. Find out about the evidence of fruits. 
I mean, find out about the agricultural potential. And they came back with an evidence of the fruit. They spent 40 quality days. In those 40 days, none of them was caught. Somebody, you need to do what you need to do. For where God is sending you. You know, <laughs> some of you, let me just tell you this. I'll just put this in. Do you know the reason why you have problems? This one God has shown me. I always try to network. You know, people talk about the advantages of networking. And I truly, as far as Ajay is, I can enter my car. Let me go through this place and just, at least no man is an island. The minute I get there, problem. I can be sitting down here. Oh, after a while, the problem will look for me. Flog me out. The Lord told me, daughter, the gifting I put in you, you know the Debras, eh? If the barracks don't accept the Debra, the gifting of Debra will not show. Some of you, you are alpha females. What did I call it? Alpha female. You know they talk about alpha male. You see the lion is an alpha male. Where there's a mighty lion, he doesn't allow another lion to come to the pride. He's the husband of all the lionesses. All of them, he'll be sleeping, oh, they'll bring food. But when the hunt gets very deep, you see the alpha male, he comes in. Some of you, what you carry is big enough to affect many people. There are people looking for direction that what you carry is what they need. If you now carry what you carry to another place, you'll be disturbing them there. Are you getting something I'm saying? You'll be disturbing them. They'll be despising you. Why? But you know this thing can walk. Ah, it can walk. When you get there, they say, no. Leave us. That's not your place. Go to the people God has sent you to. People that will honor you for what you carry. People that what you carry will bless their life. Because some principles will not work. So every time you want to say, let me, okay, let me go and network. When you get there, your glory is it's too much because you will not keep quiet when you say some things. You know you have some children. Eh? You say, hey, mommy, auntie, how are you? Auntie, how are you? Say, this girl, keep quiet. <laughs> but that's her gift. That's her gift. The typical American. When you meet the typical American, hello, how are you? I'm Carol. But Nigeria, I say, ah, ah. You roll my life, let go with lady. This one doesn't have home training. Their confidence is their gift. When, when you are sitting beside an American in the plane, they will start to talk to you. I went to my boyfriend's house. My boyfriend said, who is asking her? <laughs> That's how they go about. We confident. We're Americans. We're Americans. Who is asking you whether you're American? But that's their gift. That's how come they do a lot of things. They instill confidence in their children. They ask them to do everything. So, some of you, watch this. You are alpha females. That's why. Just greet people and leave them there. I'm telling you something I go through. That's what the Lord told me. My son told me, mommy, you are an alpha female. So, some people, I just honor them, greet them, leave them. If I try to this thing, my own will be too much. It will be too much. But when I get to my place where God has placed me, like my mentor said, enter your office. Daughter, enter your office when you get that microphone. Don't be afraid. Speak the word God is saying. I see results. 2020, know your place. Don't say because they say networking. Greet them very well. Stay in your place. They will resist you. They will shut you down. And it's not as if what you are doing is wrong. It's just because that is not your place. Don't use sentiment to go to where is not your place. He told them, scout the land very well. Look at it very well. Give, bring details. Because it's important. When you are in the right place, you will shine. But when you are in the wrong place, no matter what you carry, it will be pulled down. And it's not as if the people are bad. It's just because that is not where you are supposed to be. So I've made up my mind. 2020, I'm staying where I'm supposed 
to be. Hallelujah. I pray you have the wisdom to know your location. Don't say because of sentiment. Some invitations you will reject. Are you with me? You know, this place is not for me. When I get there, my own go. no anointing. They won't like it. Hallelujah, somebody. So, what am I saying? You need to scout the land of 2020. You need to spy the land of 2020 in the spirit. Dear friends, 2020 is a year of showing forth. It is the year where the past seeds of prayer will germinate into trees of achievement. I'm prophesying that seeds of prayers in the past will germinate into trees of achievement. You need to scout the land of 2020 in your mind and in your reasoning. You need to visualize and write down the specific information that you need to pursue in 2020. What should you add to yourself? Who should you align with? Very important. Very important. There are some people when you align with them, they, they, they will add to you. And there are some people, when you align with them, you will clash. You must be able to discern that. And some people, there is a manner of alignment. You can align from afar. Align from afar. Not that you disconnect from people. Not that you hate them. But you can't come too close because some things will clash. Hallelujah. What should you add to yourself? What skill set do you need to get for 2020 to be a success? How do you want to position your business, your marriage, your family? This is what I want you to think about in this first service. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Step forward quickly. Quick, that prayer of salvation. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your voice, everyone. Say, Lord. Open my eyes. Speak to my heart. What I need to do. To step into my promised land. In 2020. Pray, 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 pray. Masa Katali. You need to spy the land of 2020 in the spirit. Say, Father, take me in the spirit into 2020. Help me to identify the opportunities of 2020. In the name of Jesus. Help me, oh Lord. Show me, show me, show me the challenges ahead of 2020 so I can prepare in my business and in my work. Show me, show me, show me. Say, Father, help me to scout the year 2020 and identify areas of greatness in 2020. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Say, Father, show me the people to align with in 2020 in my business, in my ministry. Show me the people to align with in 2020 in the name of Jesus. Show me how to position my business in 2020. Show me how to position my ministry in 2020. Show me how to position my life in 2020. Show me how to position my marriage in 2020 in the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Oh Lord, reveal to me the opportunities of 2020. Aha. Ahead, help me to, to take advantage of the opportunities of 2020. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, give me speed in 2020. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, give me speed, give me speed, give me speed. Give me speed in 2020. Pray, pray, pray. We're, we're already programming at 2020. Give my ministry speed. Give my business speed. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, open up divine opportunities for me in 2020. Oh, in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, we are all going to pray. You are going to pray for a fresh prophetic grace. The eyes that see, the ears that hear, 
that the Lord will sharpen. Some of you, you were prophetic before. Some of you were prophetic before. Some of you know you have a prophetic gift in, but you didn't find it to flame. And some of you, you went to sleep on your gift. If you don't sharpen your gift, you won't see it manifesting. So, for the next five minutes, you are going to hold the person next to you. Two, 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 Pastor Vivian, come. Two, 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 two. We are going to ask that the Lord will sharpen our prophetic gift. Watch this. I went for a prophetic meeting and when I got back, I began to pray. Okay? My father had taught me, anywhere you see prophets, eh? <laughs> Don't let them escape you. I thank God for my native father. He said, don't ever let any prophet escape you. You are in a place where prophets are ministry. You must, even if it's one cobble, you must give to them. As I began to pray, I felt the prophetic, a prophetic word now came. And that's when the Lord told me, it's a season. You and all the people with you, you are moving to a season whereby all your past seeds will begin to come. You know that word alone has brought comfort. Has it not comforted you? That word alone has brought joy. That word alone has told me, don't worry, things are going to happen in your life, in your marriage. Why? The prophetic word. It was from a place of the spirit. I was just praying. I was just praying. The Lord has said, because in your ministry, that's the next level of anointing that will manifest. You and all the people, you are going into a prophetic dimension. God wanted to take everyone, myself, to a new level of prophetic dimension. Everybody with that background, you are going to cry. My prophetic anointing break forth. Lift up your voice. Masata Kayagata. <laughs>